Hey, what's up guys? So I wanted to give my Demon Slayer manga collection a proper home. So here's the build process of their new home. Hope you guys enjoy. But before we can begin any woodwork, we have to have a plan. Here I made the box in a 3D program called Maya. This gives me a better understanding on how I'm going to approach this project. I was also able to do the measurements inside the program so I can cut all the pieces to the exact length that I need. Right now what you're looking at is the outside of the box and if I remove the door you can see where the shelf will lay inside and also the interior of the box. Then if I remove the outer um, wood of the box you can see the frame how and how the inside of the, the walls lay on the frame. Here I'm removing the frame and this is just how the layout of the inside of the box will look like. I'm also going to have um, a slit in between the walls so then the shelf can slide in and out freely. And then here's how the inside walls are sitting, as well as the top and bottom of the interior. And here I'm just showing a quick little turnaround of the whole top, bottom, left, right. Just um, multiple views of this box and here's also a x-ray view. So then this is basically what it'll look like when it's all assembled. Now that we're done planning, we can get to the woodwork. To start things off, I'm using 0.5 by 1 pieces of plywood that I cut to length. And I'm going to be gluing them temporarily with this Gorilla Glue and clamping them together. So I glued all of the bottom frame and the top frame just to make it faster. And here are the results so far. Just a bunch of L's. And then for this one, I didn't have another one of these with um, a rubber padding on them. So I used some of the scrap pieces to put it here so then this wood doesn't get um, dented or damaged or anything. Just a little tip if you're ever, if you're planning on making something like this and you don't have like um, some sort of protection for the wood you're working on. But yeah. After this, I'm going to assemble the pairs together to make um, a rectangle so then it can form the bottom and top of the frame. Here's the frame put together. It's just right now put together with the super glue. Then I'm gonna go in with the, the staple gun and then like hold it together permanently. So in case the glue wears off or something and it breaks apart. And that's just to prevent that. So it can be sturdier. And then I'm about to do the outside walls. Just gotta measure them and then cut them up and then after I get the staples, I'll staple them all onto the frame. So after a bit of measuring and a little bit of cutting later, I managed to get the inside walls done and then the shelf part for the division of the 12 and then 11 of the manga. So what I did was I measured from here to here, which I think it was um, 15 and 3 quarters. Um, and I just duplicated on the other side and then from there I took half of it I think it was like eight and some fraction so then I took um, the measurement of three millimeters which is the thickness of this board and then I just cut a slit in between these two planks just to make that able to fit right now nothing's secured in it's um it's just in there is this all snug? After I just glue these to the the frame, and then I'm gonna shoot them with nails, and then inside, and then if they protrude, I'm going to just cut them off with my Dremel. Just a quick slice off, and then I'm gonna be using around the whole thing this plastic wood just to fill in all the gaps and just to make it look um, like a big 
cohesive piece. But yeah, it's coming along well. More updates to come as they come. So after using the staple gun, um, here's the end result. I have the walls, the inside walls in, and then the bottom of the inside in. Now I just have to go with um, my Dremel and just remove the excess nails coming out from the sides. And then after that, I just have to sand, let me see, like here, some of it is coming off from the side because I don't know, for, some, for whatever reason, it didn't want to go on straight. And then I'm gonna use the, this plastic wood just to fill in all the gaps. So it'll look nice uh, at the end. So I have the side walls on and I just need to do the top. I gotta just cut these flush so I can put the top on and then just sand away at these edges, the excess, and then I can put the top on flat. Same with the bottom. I believe there's a bit. Yeah, right here. Sand that down a bit and this one should be fine. Just, I'm just still gonna sand it. And then these edges here, so I can put these little front panels on. But yeah, it's coming together. Slowly but surely. Almost done. Then after I'm done with all of this, I'm just going to fill, them, fill in the gaps and then let it dry. Sand it down so everything's nice and flush. And then get to staining. Then after that, I put on the hardware. So here's a quick update. I have put on the rear wall. I already stapled it in. The side wall's in. The front trim is in. Also at the bottom here. The floor is in. Well, there's actually a ceiling. But the ceiling's in. The floor's in. And then right now I'm working on doing the bottom and the top. And then this side's in. I'm just gluing down like any little loose areas. I might also get it here. But for the most part, everything's holding together pretty well. It's coming out pretty nice. After using the plastic wood on the indentations, the staples left, this is what the outcome is. It's all pretty flat. It just needs a, a sanding a bit just to make everything nice and flat for the most part most of the holes are hidden which is good and then here's the bottom yeah it's coming out pretty good right now i'm focusing on cutting up the pieces for the corners and all the metal. I'm using my Dremel just to slice up all the pieces of metal that I need to its required length. So these were the corner pieces that I bought off Amazon. I like the way they look. They're like a little worn out. But they weren't the correct shape for what I needed for the build. So I went ahead and cut them up, and then this is what I ended up with. It 
it ends up looking pretty good on the corner piece. And then I had cut uh, three additional pieces for the corners. I had cut it out of other pieces. But since I cut off so much to get the shape that I wanted, I ended up cutting off these pre-drilled holes. And those are for the nails that go into the wood to secure the piece in place. So what I'm gonna do is I went ahead with all the pieces and made uh, like little indentations for a guide uh, for where I'm going to be um, drilling and I'm going to be using just a, the smallest drill that I could find to drill the holes into to get that hole so I can nail them onto the box securely. Here's the original hole. And then here's the one I had cut. It's almost spot on, but it's just a slightly bit bigger, but that won't be a problem. So after drilling the holes, I think I did a pretty good job. They kind of look store-bought minus the little scratches at the ends. That's pretty cool. And then I'm just gonna do the same for the rest of them. And then I'll catch up with you guys. So this is pretty much the final product. I've already finished sanding the surface of the box and filling about like 99% of the holes. There's just some little ones here and there. That are little. I don't mind them, that's fine. I think it's at a pretty good state. Now I just need to stain. And the stain I'm going to be using is a Minwax Poly Shades. It's a satin and polyurethane in one step, so I don't have to put on any polyurethane. It's already in here with it. But I'm also going to be putting on a top coat after it just to protect it even further. And I got like an antique walnut look. So it should, it should look pretty nice. So I'm about to apply the first coat of the wood stain. So you just take a little bit, take out the excess, and just lightly So that's the first coat down. I'll just let it dry and then I'm gonna hit it with another coat to get it a bit darker.
that's the shelf. Here's the door. I came in with like a couple more coats. I actually sanded down the whole surface, everything, because it was it wasn't look it was looking a little rough. And here's a little sneak peek on what it looks like while it dries. And I'm about to move on to the hardware and begin to sand that down and paint it because the pieces are black and the ones I have are silver, so I need to paint them black. And what I'm gonna be using is this um, Rust-Oleum black hammered look. So it gives it like a, I'm assuming that this is kind of like the texture it's gonna have. I kind of want it to be a little rough looking, like old, you know. And after that, I'm gonna be using this Rust-Oleum crystal clear enamel. This is just to keep the metal from getting chipped like the paint or getting rusty over time. So I went in with a, what is this, um, 60 grit. And it was just to roughen up the surface so then the paint can stick better to the metal. And then I'm about to paint this piece black. This is the bottom piece of the box, like the bottom black trim. And then here are the six brackets that go in front of the box. Here's the outcome of the spray. I like the texture it gives off. And then here are the brackets. And then the last ones I need to do are the pieces coming from the sides and the back of the box. So here's the box after more staining and I already put the clear coat on and it's drying up so you can see it's like shiny. Just a little dirty. And I'm about to put on the corner pieces on the top. I'm currently working on the door and I have the decoration pieces on. The handles on and these these pins, they were like um, upholstery pins. I found them at Home Depot, no, Home Depot and I had to make a hole through this sheet metal. It's like a thin piece of metal and I glued the back of it onto the wood and uh, I'm also securing it on with these push pins but they go through the wood because they're long so what I did was I chopped off the excess and right now I'm going in and grinding away at the excess until until it's flat with the rest of the door same thing with the screws this one's all the way through this one I'm in the process of grinding down um, I'm trying to get it close enough so I don't damage the wood, but yeah, this is the progress so far on the door. Next after this is the hinges. I still don't know how I'm gonna mount the door, uh, whether I want the hinges on the outside or the inside of the door, I'll have to see. And I have this bracket on here. After that, I'm going to mount the rest of the brackets and then do the, the ones that go around around the rest of the piece. So I've made, made quite a bit of progress. I have the side, the side pieces on. They're a little wonky, but 
they work. And I have the front pieces on, the other front pieces on, and then also on the other side I have the side pieces. Right now, what I need to do is get rid of these excess that you can see here and here from these that are sticking out because I cut them a little bit like, longer so then I can come back and then just make them flat so then when the back pieces come on it lays on top of um, the metal all the way to the other side onto the metal so it's just it looks like one big piece but yeah it's coming out it's getting there it'll get there so here it is finished pretty much I have the sides, the front, the decorated pieces on the door, the handle, and then on the left side. And then I have pieces on the back, and then the bottom trim. All I need to do is just um, put the hinges on, because right now the door isn't secure all the way. But yeah, here's the inside. And then I'll do a, a fit with the manga inside so for my original plan for the hinges didn't really work out I wanted to have the hinges on the inside and when I had that's why these are um, filled with wood I had cut indentations into the door and then I put these in and I glued them in there and then I was going to attach them um, in here I already filled these in right now. I'm currently putting layers of um, the coating on it to get rid of the holes. But I wanted to have it from the inside, on the, the hinges on the inside, but it didn't work out. Um, I don't know. I guess my math was off. So I'm just going to put the hinges on the front. It'll look a little busy, but I mean, the hinges are put on and it works out the way I want it. Cause then I can um, already have the holes in place. All I gotta do is wait for everything to dry and then, so then everything can be flush. This is basically what it'll look like. I don't like it that much cause it doesn't, it doesn't stay like true to the original design. But I mean, it gets the job done. You know, at the end of the day, it's just to hold the manga inside. And I also don't like it because it just looks really busy like in this section, but I mean, it's all right. Once it's on, it'll be able to open and close as intended. So here's the end product. I really like how everything turned out. Everything fit perfectly. I think Rokoraki would be pretty proud. But the only thing I would need to fix are these gouges I made from when I cut off the excess nails that were coming through the door from the hinges. Other than that, the build is pretty much complete. Thank you guys for watching and joining me on this journey. This has been your friend, Fishy Friend. See ya.